Today, I'd like to show you my CNC offline controller enclosure that I built. I did do a little customizing on it and put J Fabrications LLC on there, as well as my logo on the side. Um, I did do a little shiny stuff here is glue, hot glue, just to give it a little bit of traction when it's on a surface. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, with the box complete, let me give you a look at how I'm going to connect it and what it actually looks like pretty much by itself. I customized this machine by reverse engineering it, deciding how I wanted it to be. And I wanted a mobile handheld unit that I could use around and use more like thumb presses. But I also wanted to have something to where it can store on the machine itself. So what we have here is we have the MPG, the handheld that I can actually use by itself to manipulate the CNC, the enclosure itself that I can use to manipulate the CNC. I can take both wherever because they will be connected with this wiring here. And at the end, what I have done is with my enclosures, I have, they're not plug and play, but I have created them so once they are completed, they act as plug and play. So what we have here is we're gonna have the connections that'll go to the driver enclosure that sends the signals to the drivers. We'll have the power for the offline controller. And then this one is gonna actuate the power through this button for the water cooling for the CNC. And I do plan on going a little bit further in depth uh, of a overview of the CNC itself. But let's show you how this actually connects. And these two wires, these go to the VFD, the variable frequency drive, and starts and stops, but does not control the speed. I use the potentiometer, or what can be referred to as a pot, in order to control that directly on the face. So I don't have to go into the menus during a program, I can just change the speed with a dial. Let's see how we hook this up. So I have the cabling going underneath the table, because that's where I plan on having it. It stays out of the way, keeps it as one mobile unit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our connection that's gonna go to the drivers that send the signals to our motors. This is just an aviation connection, so it only goes in one way. This one here is the power for the offline controller. The power does come through my driver enclosure because I did not anticipate having a separate signal for the water cooling. This was added later on because milliamps is what's used from the offline controller to control the water cooling and I did not know, or I should say it beat me, so I wired around it. So we're gonna connect the power for the offline controller. I would have wired all connections through one box had I known I needed three from the beginning. And then we're gonna connect the actuation because all the power for the, uh, the water cooling is in here for the spindle. But this is just what actuates it and gives me a remote on my offline controller. All that's left to do is plug in the power. And in this power enclosure is where all the power is housed. So the power for the spindle gets plugged in here. And then the power for the CNC, the cooling fans, the water cooling, and the fans that will cool the water cooling for the spindle all runs through this one. These are two separate circuits. And when I mean circuits, I mean two separate breakers um, that these are wired through. Now that we have our offline controller connected, let's go ahead and plug it in and turn on the system. I do get a lot of questions on how I wired my system. I would like to say that I think my system is a unique build. I had to reverse engineer it, pretty much think about what I wanted my system to be when I was done and reverse engineer it with the components and how I wanted it to be from there. So that's how I came up with two separate boxes, one for power and one for my drivers. I also have these so all the connections can be taken off 
and one individual box can be taken off and worked on individually if I have to replace a piece or if I'm going to change the configuration, whether it's my power enclosure or my driver enclosure. So I have two extension cords down here and these are going to be my two circuits. They're plugged into the wall. I do not have my power switch that I'm going to use here, but the entire machine will be activated off of one on off switch. So we're going to take one of my circuits here and we're going to plug it into my power circuit for my spindle, my spindle or my VFD. And then from the VFD, it's going to go to the spindle. You will see that the power does come on here. This is live, but the VFD does not have power running to it because I have a relay in here that will only allow power to flow through this circuit once it recognizes that the power is turned on from this circuit. So let's plug this extension cord in to that circuit. All right, now you'll notice that the power is not on here because I have not flipped the switch. It is plugged into the wall, but the on off switch that I'm using is not on. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And this one right here is plugged in for the pump, which happens to be in a five gallon bucket currently for the water cooling for the spindle. There's obviously no power flowing through there currently because there's no power flowing into that circuit. Flip on the switch. All of the fans are connected, so that is the, the noise you're hearing. It should be a little bit louder than what it actually is in real life. For the cooling I get, I am very happy with it. All right, looks like I have a reset button that's been actuated. There we go. And that tone was just telling me that the reset button I had pressed on that MPG, the handheld that I left over there, so the machine would not move until I had reset that. So let's go, let's go ahead and we'll give you a look on the inside. There is quite a bit of dust. I'll probably show a little bit of me cutting this out because what I did is I left the dust shoe off because I was intrigued. I wanted to watch it cut. That's a problem that I have, which creates a lot of dust and I normally just blow it back. So it drops down here and then ends up going through my filter material, which is done phenomenally, by the way. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what the inside looks like. I did design these so they can open when they are running. You'll see that just kind of fell in there, but that is as dirty as they have been. I've only changed the filters once since I have installed these boxes. And the temperature that I've had, the highest these get to is a bit about 95, 96. And that's with an outside temperature of 110 degrees. I won't be going into a detailed reverse engineer trace of the wiring of this, but I do plan on doing something like that in the future just to kind of show visually how the power gets routed through the CNC. I happen to be a visual learner and I understand that there's a lot of people out there that may be as well. Previously, when I've shown my boxes, I realized that I know the least out there and I've kind of catered to me wanting to gain information, but I haven't given the information that I have to newer people that may want to use this unit to control their CNC. Because with this unit, there is no UC100, uh, a breakout board, an Andro. That's all included in here. This system is ready to run. All I need is, of course, the design software, which I'll have on a, a PC or a, a Mac, a, a computer that I'll have in a dust-free area not too far away. And once I have that program on the flash drive, I just load it in here and run everything through here. One thing I did forget to show is the water cooling. So when I press this button, 
the water cooling comes on here and actuates the pump in the five gallon button for my spindle. Let's take a look around the CNC. On the front, we have a VFD, which runs the spindle. We'll turn it around to the side here. You can see currently I have open space. I plan on adding storage, which will be cabinets or drawers later for better organization. On the back, we have our enclosures. I designed this to be an all-in-one unit that can be unplugged, moved to another location, plugged back in, and run. On the other side, we have the five gallon bucket for the water cooling. It will not sit on the CNC, but it can sit there for transport. It will normally sit on the ground, but later I plan on making a holder that I should have a video on in the future. Let me show you how I built it. I started out with a sketch. This happens to be a photo of the prototype mid stages. Today what I'd like to do is show you how I'm going to build an offline control box or an enclosure for my offline controller that I use to manipulate my CNC machine. This CNC is a Gatton CNC designed by Dave Gatton. Uh, check the link in the description if you'd like to see more information or how to build or purchase this machine. This happens to be my fourth prototype of the controller that I've done. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll see the shipping box that I had that I used just to make sure that it worked and I understood the functions. This was the second prototype. This one is the third. I did start to see if I needed wire management on the inside because I figured with the manipulation moving it around, there'd be some tugging and pulling on it. This one is the fourth prototype and the one I've been using currently. I have just used shipping tape to kind of secure it. And what I realized is as long as I could secure the cables that are coming in, which I'll probably use a grommet or some sort of a, a connection to secure it, very least it'll be zip ties, but it'll work. I don't need any cable management on the inside. I just need to make sure I have enough space for everything to fit. I uh, have a little bit of airflow, so nothing's going to overheat. And, and as long as it's secured there, I should be just fine to move it around as need be, and there shouldn't be any tension on the inside. So, and then you can kind of see with me, I have to basically place it on a table or somewhere safe. So the goal is going to be, once I have an enclosure, I'm going to build a mount that's going to be right here uh, that I can basically store and then take off and use as need be. And the goal is going to be to use this scrap piece of plywood that I had gotten um, off a previous project and a piece of hardboard to make my enclosure. Let's see what we can make happen. To start this project, I made a cut to clean up the edge of the plywood. Then I made a cut which would give me the top and bottom of the enclosure. Then I took the plywood to the miter saw to make a cut to clean up the other edge before making a cut to make the back of the enclosure. Another cut at the table saw gives me my side pieces. Then it's over to the miter saw to cut the top and bottom to length. Then I cut the sides to their length. And it's out with the regular blade, in with the dado blade, out with the riving knife, and in with the dado insert. Then it was time to break out one of the sleds so I could cut the rabbits on all the panels. Then we're back to the miter saw to cut the hardboard, which will be the front panel that'll hold the offline controller. Back at the table saw with the standard blade, making grooves in the panels to hold the front panel more like an insert. Since I'm using the standard table saw blade, I do have to make an adjustment to make the groove wide enough in order to accommodate the hardboard. Here I'm drilling holes in the sides for barrel or dowel nuts to secure the top, which will give me easy access to the insides. 
Then I'll use my doweling jig to drill a hole for the bolt that'll go through the top to the barrel nut. All right, let's see what we got. So now that we have our pieces cut, I just wanna kinda of put it together to see what we're looking at. This will be the panel. I'm gonna be a sliding panel that the front where the actual offlining controller will slide into, and then this will be the top. And still got a few more cuts and little refinements, but that will be the new box. All right. So far, liking the way everything fits. Just gotta hope it all fits inside the enclosure now. Here's where I'm doing a little customizing just to make it fancy. Now it's time for the glue up. While the glue dries, I'm going to drill a hole through the top that will allow the cables to come in to connect to the offline controller. Back at the table saw, I'm using the sled again to make the hole in the top a groove to allow the cables to come through without disconnecting them. I quickly realized that I had cut on the wrong side and should have flipped a piece to reduce tear out. Good news is there's nothing like a little stain to add a little character to your project. Drilling the holes for the hardware to secure the top. Decided to do a little routing to soften the edges. All right, I fitted the components of the offline controller into the enclosure. And I'm pretty happy with how it came out so far. This is not its final state. It will have a little bit different hardware. And of course, we'll do a little bit better cable management to finalize it. This front panel I did all by hand. Most of it I did all by hand. But this front panel, I think I can do a little bit better. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is a little bit of a gap up top. And I think since this is just a panel that comes out, we're gonna give the CNC a shot, and see what I can do there. Let's see what we can make happen. I am happy how the controller came out. This is the fifth prototype here. I'd say it came out pretty close to the way that the sketch is. I did a little bit of extra on the front panel with the CNC. I won't be doing anything like this in the future. The hardboard creates a lot of dust, even more than MDF. This was the second prototype. This was the third prototype. This is the fourth prototype. This being the fifth, and the one I want to keep for a little while. I did a little customizing on the side with the J Fabrications logo, and then J Fabrications LLC on the top. Now that I have a good looking enclosure, I need to create a place where I can store this. I guess we'll have to tune into the next video to see the holder that I'm going to create. The plan is to make something like this. Let's see what we can make happen. 